Hello everybody and welcome. If you are here, you are probably either a night shooter or you're aspiring to be a night shooter and I want to teach you guys about how to reduce the noise in your night photos. Now there's a wide variety of factors that are causing noise in your night photos but ultimately what it boils down to is that you're not allowing enough light into the camera uh, and so the camera has to compensate by essentially artificially brightening or bringing up the uh, brightness in the dark areas that are don't have a lot of details. So there's a few different things that you can do to tackle this problem. There's a couple different things we can do by purchasing new camera gear and doing different techniques. And there's a couple other things we can do uh, via software on the computer that can reduce noise. So I'm going to talk about four of my favorite things to do in order to reduce the noise on your night photos. So if you've got night photos that are very, very noisy, consider using these four tips, um, especially if you can combine all four together to get the ultimate lowest noise image possible because ultimately night photos look so much better when they don't have a ton of noise everywhere. So let's get right to it. Tip number one is going to be to stack your photos. Now if you use a Mac you can stack in Starry Landscape Stacker and if you use a PC you can use a program called Sequator. Essentially what this means is that you're going to go out into the field when you shoot your photos and instead of just taking one photo of a particular composition you're going to take four to five, maybe even eight to 10 photos of that same composition. You're just simply going to click the shutter over and over again at that same spot, taking the same composition, or you can of course use like a shutter release or something like that to just take all the photos uh, at one time. The reason why you're gonna do this is because then you're gonna bring it back in and you're gonna do some post-processing work on your computer and you are going to stack these photos together in that software. The software is designed to stack the photos and align them. Essentially what the software does is it's gonna look at the photos and determine where there's noise on the photos and it's going to match the photos where there's noise and it's going to reduce the noise quite a bit. Uh, it's really difficult to explain exactly what the software does but essentially what you need to know is that it makes it so that your photos do not have nearly the same amount of noise. Uh, I've done a lot of testing with this software. It works amazing and it's super super easy to use. It's something that you got to pick up. I'll include links down below for Sequator as well as Starry Landscape Stacker depending on if you're on Mac or PC. Now the one downside to this tip is that you obviously cannot go back, uh, if you have photos that are already noisy and you only shot one photo, you can't go back and generate more files of the same photo. So basically this is only gonna work going forwards. But now if you have a really noisy photo already that you want to reduce the noise on, there is still something you can do software wise. Uh, and that software is something that I've reviewed so, so many times. You guys have probably seen me review it before if you've been watching my channel. That is Topaz Denoise AI. It is the most incredible noise reduction software on the market today, in my opinion. And what it does is it just reduces the noise using AI technology. This works really, really great because you can check a little box that's like a little lightning bolt and that allows the software to just automatically choose all of the settings. And honestly, nine times out of 10, it works flawlessly. It does a great job. I've never seen any other software reduce noise quite as good as Topaz Denoise AI. It is an incredible software. I'll also include a link down below where you can pick that up. And that's going to work great on photos that you've already taken out in the field. Uh, if you don't have another way to reduce the noise, this is the best option that you have is to download this really, really great software. Like I said, I personally think it's the best denoising software on the market. So you can download it, give it a try on your night photos. And of course, let me know what you think if you guys like it or not. But honestly, I use it on every single one of my night photos. Now tip number three is to pick up a star tracker. I've got one right here uh, and if you have never heard of a star tracker you're probably very confused as to what this does, what it looks like. It's not the most straightforward device um, when you look at it because you are going to stack a lot of things on top. Basically how the star tracker works is this will go on your tripod so it's going to be sitting just like this on your tripod. Your ball head will go on top on this plate here and then your camera goes on the ball head. Now with the star tracker you have to align it with the north star by either looking through one of these holes here um, or you can shine a laser through it and you align it with the north star. You use a couple different micro adjustment heads and stuff like that that I'm not going to get into in this video. But essentially you are going to perfectly line this up so it's aiming at the north star. So it might be at like an angle just like this. And then you'll put your camera on top, you'll turn this on. Now what this does is it's turning at the proper speed so that you can take a very, very long exposure of the night sky. 
And this is obviously beneficial because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, a lot of your noise problems are because you can't allow in enough light. So you've got to turn up the ISO. So the star tracker allows you to shoot like four, eight, 12, even 20 minute exposures of the Milky Way uh, on the star tracker. So you can imagine when your exposure is that long, your ISO can be really, really low. Now without the star tracker, what's preventing you from shooting that long of an exposure is that the stars will be trailing. But because you have this star tracker, the stars will not be trailing because it is turning at the same speed as the stars or at the same speed as the earth, which makes the stars look like they're turning. So the one downside to using a product like this one here is that the foreground will be blurry when you do this because it's moving with the stars, it's not moving with the foreground. Now this can be really, really tough because now you have to go in and Photoshop and do some more editing work. But in my opinion, once you do it a few times, it's not too terribly hard. Um, and when you go into Photoshop, you'll essentially have a blue hour photo that you're gonna take like right after sunset or right before sunrise. And you're gonna combine that with the Milky Way you shot from the same night. You can combine the two together to get your Milky Way image. That way you're going to have a very, very low image. You can have your Milky Way and your foreground both shot at like ISO 400 or 800 or 200 so that your noise is so, so, so very low. And ultimately, if you're gonna shoot a lot of night photos, I think that star tracking is the way to go. It is the best way to take night photos. You guys should definitely pick up a star tracker if you guys wanna keep doing that. This one here that I'm holding is made by my friends over at Slick. You guys can get 15% off on slickusa.com by using Jackson 15. This is called their ECH 630 Star Tracker. It's the one that I bring to all my workshops. My clients really, really like it because it's really small and lightweight and it's perfect for shooting wide angle Milky Way stuff on a tracker and it's not too terribly difficult to align if you pick up a laser pointer. All right, guys, well, the fourth and final tip here is the most expensive, and that involves just picking up some new gear. Um, whether you need a new camera or a new lens, you might need to pick up some new gear if your photos are very noisy. There's definitely some camera sensors that work a lot better for night photos and for low light images. Uh, for example, I love my Sony a7R 4 It takes amazing night photos. Uh, the a7R 2 does as well, and any Sony a7 series camera that I've used does. I've seen some really great results out of some of the Canon and Nikon mirrorless as well. Um, but you may need to buy a more expensive camera not always, but generally speaking, the more expensive cameras are gonna have better sensors for low light. And this is something that you can do a lot of research about online. Now, if you've already got a good camera body, you might consider getting a new lens. When you've got a lens with a aperture that opens up a little bit further, that allows you to lower the ISO because you're gonna get that light by opening the aperture. Some of the best night photography lenses are those wide angle lenses between 12 and 18 millimeters that have an aperture between F1.4 and F2.8. The wider the aperture and the wider the lens, the better it's gonna be for night photos because you can take a longer exposure with a lower ISO when you have both of those things. So you might consider picking up a new lens. Of course, depending on the kind of camera you have, there's a variety of different lenses, so I won't make any recommendation just because I know that there is a ton of different cameras out there. So it's hard to make recommendations for any one type of camera. Um, but these are my four tips that I would consider using if you guys want to create lower noise night images. That's the main difficulty of shooting night photos is they're usually very, very high noise. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or if you have any tips that you guys think of, please leave them down below in the comments. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. And of course, it helps support my channel. Please make sure that you like and subscribe subscribe this video so I can keep making these videos for you guys. I really enjoy it and I know that a lot of you guys find these very helpful and I always appreciate you guys checking them out. Thank you guys so much for checking this weekend's video out and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.